not to be replaced. But if you ever need that pen shatter, let me know. Okay. Good morning, y'all. Good morning. Good morning. I had something all lined up to do this morning, and then I considered my medications, which was a healthy slug of codeine topped with some uh, pseudophenadrine and. Uh, between the stuff they make meth out and the codeine, I thought I better stick to a script today and do something somebody <laughs> else, would, lest I take off and go down the wrong trail. I'm going to read something out of uh, Charles Spurgeon's Morning and Evening, and it's based on Leviticus 6.13. Read that if you get a chance. It's the fire shall ever be burning on the altar, it shall never go out. And it's all about prayer. So try and wade your way through some of the old English. This cat, man, he was, is a hundred years ago. And it's as if he could be preaching on the streets today. It says, keep the altar of private prayer burning. This is the very life of all piety. The sanctuary and family altars borrow their fires here. Therefore, let this burn well. Secret devotion is the very essence, evidence, and barometer of vital and experimental religion. Burn here the fat of your sacrifice. Let your closet seasons be, if possible, regular, frequent, and undisturbed. Effectual prayer alleviateth much. Have you nothing to pray for? Let us, let us suggest the church, the ministry, your own soul, your children, your relations, your neighbors, your country, the cause of God and truth throughout the world. Let us never think when we go down on our knees there's nothing to pray about. Let us examine ourselves on this important matter. Do we engage in lukewarmness in private devotion? Is this the fire of devotion burning dimly in our hearts? Do the chariot wheels drag heavily? If so, let us be alarmed at this sign of decay. Let us go with weeping and ask for the spirit of grace and of supplications. Let us set apart special seasons for extraordinary prayer. For this fire should be smothered beneath the ashes of worldly conformity. It will dim the fire on the family altar and lessen our influence both in the church and in the world. The text will also apply to the altar of the heart. This is a golden altar indeed. God loves to see the hearts of his people glowing towards himself. Let us give to God our hearts, all blazing with love, and seek his grace that the fire may never be quenched, for it will not burn if the Lord does not keep it burning. Many foes will attempt to extinguish it, but if the unseen hand behind the wall pour upon the sacred oil, it will blaze higher and higher. Let us use text of scripture as fuel for our heart's fire. They are a live coal. Let us attend sermons, but above all, let us much be alone with Jesus. Amen. Have Dear God, let us tend to our prayer life that we, we have much to pray about, and it's not all about us. It's about you, and it's praise for you and for those that need to be reached. We know that sometimes our eyes are weary as we go down on our knees, or we're distracted with thoughts of tomorrow and things that need to be done or things that didn't get done. But one of the things that needs to be done and should never really be left undone is prayer towards you. Thanks for your son, Jesus Christ, and for the hope of this world. And it's in the strong name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.